Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 36 for Wednesday, March 11th, 2015. Feed readers. This episode of Android App Arena is brought to you by SmartThings. SmartThings lets you monitor, control, and automate your home from wherever you are using your smartphone. Right now, SmartThings is offering Android App Arena listeners 10% off any home security or solution kit and get free shipping in the U.S. when you go to smartthings.com twit and use the offer code twit at checkout. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. Uh, do you remember the days? Things used to be so simple. Google had this service called Google Reader. You could use it to subscribe to all your favorite RSS feeds. It was synced with your Google account. And, well, I suppose we all took it for granted. We all thought there was no such thing as a future that existed without the presence of Google Reader in our lives. Then it happened. Google did what it's good at. Google decided that Reader wasn't used by enough people to warrant a continuation of the service and set an end of light, uh, life date for Reader. Mass hysteria ensues. Now, out of the ashes rose a number of services that attempted to fill the void, and arguably one of the most popular of those became a service called Feedly. It actually existed before Google Reader uh, went under. Uh, or was phased out, but uh, this kind of bolstered its presence. You can actually import your Google Reader feeds list into Feedly and pick up where you left off. It wasn't quite the same, and even if it was, people would still be dissatisfied to some extent because no one likes change. Uh, but now, a few years since the demise of Google Reader, it's pretty safe to say that Feedly is the shining star of the category, so much so that now other feed reading apps tap into Feedly's APIs to offer incentive to check out their apps for feed reading. That's what, uh, that's what today's all about. I'm bypassing Feedly itself altogether to check out a few lesser known feed reading apps for Android because, well, you know, competition is good. All three apps have Feedly support baked in, so switching over is very easy. And they each bring with them a different and unique perspective. So let's jump in and take a look at three feed reading apps for Android in this week's Best of the Best. Let's start off with one of the more minimal offerings of the bunch. Feed Me is a free RSS reader with no in-app ads, and it has support for both Feedly and in a reader. When you first install the app, you can select the service with which to sync. You tap that sync button, and all of your feeds are imported in very quickly. But Feedme also allows you to add feeds manually by tapping into subscription and then tapping that plus icon. That allows you to drop in a feed URL or you can search feeds by keyword or hashtag. Feedme is a no must, no fuss feed reader. You don't get any images in your items list, so if you like your readers to include lots of pretty pictures while you scan, you best look elsewhere. But many people appreciate a more textual approach to feed scanning. That little blue dot on the left side tells you that the article is currently unread and you can swipe an item right or left, and settings allow you to assign custom actions to those swipes, like marking it red or assigning a tag. Tap into an item and FeedMe defaults to showing you the contents of the RSS feed, images, and all. You can double tap to switch to a web-based view as well. That might be useful if a content provider only gives RSS readers access to a portion of the full post, which happens a lot. You can tap the star to save any item to your favorites list, and that can be useful for storing particular articles for offline reading. There is full offline support here. Feedme also supports a few of the most popular read later services like Pocket, Instapaper, Readability, and Evernote, and you can select one to be your default. So instead of filtering through a long list of services to share to, you can just share directly to your favorite by tapping the dots and then to the service. Finally, Feedme offers one widget that frankly, does nothing more than show you your unread count. But in all, FeedMe is pretty solid, particularly for a completely ad-free RSS reader that still includes things like offline sync and other extra bells and whistles for no cost. Find FeedMe 
One word for free in the Play Store. Next up is a feed reading app that definitely qualifies as feature rich. News Plus offers a graphical interface with a number of material design touches, and though the app looks good on a phone, it actually shines on a tablet. At the heart of News Plus is its extensions platform that brings with it compatibility with an ever-growing list of external services. With a free version of News Plus, you can sync one extension. You'll have to pay the $4.99 for the premium version to access unlimited extensions. Among those services supported through extension, Feedly, of course, but also InnoReader, News Blur Plus, Pocket Plus, Readability, and a bunch more. This basically allows you to import your feeds from those services and manage them inside News Plus. Now, News Plus offers a few ways to browse and search for new feeds as well. You'll also see this Podcasts Search tab, and that's because, yes, News Plus also has support for podcast feeds. But one thing that podcast fans might also appreciate is how News Plus can actually take your text based articles and deliver them using Google's text to speech system. So if you're on the go, just tap that speaker and take a listen. Starting today, DirecTV customers can stream live content from HBO and Cinemax channels directly to their phones and tablets. Both the podcast support and voice reading mode are included with the premium version. Now, going back to the article list, it can be displayed and sorted in a number of ways depending on how visual you like the layout to be. Tapping into an article gives you a tweakable layout, including ways to invert the colors, easier on the eyes, and expand or shrink down the font size. You can favorite a post to access later, and the share button can be programmed to share only to your preferred service, which I, of course, like. It saves me from scanning endlessly for Pocket in a list of other apps. There are also a few included widgets for your home screen of varied size, so choose wisely. Honestly, just scanning through the settings on News Plus shows you just how customization can be done and exactly what I meant earlier when I called this app feature rich. You might not use all of these features, but it's certainly nice to know that you can. News Plus is free with a premium version for $4.99 in the Play Store. And finally, a new RSS reader from the developers of Beautiful Widgets and Plume called Palabra. For those of you curious with what that word means, Palabra is actually French for discuss, which is fitting for a feed reader, I suppose. First off, Palabra was created with material design top of mind, bringing with it the touches we've come to expect, including some nice, smooth animations between app states. Palabra allows you to import your feeds for Feedly at startup, but also has this Manage Sources section that allows you to input keywords that bring back a number of other sites to add to your collection. Go out to your articles list and you'll see that things look very card-based by default, though you can modify it to represent more of a list style view in the settings. That's a bit easier on my eyes personally. Tapping any result takes you to the article view. Palabra shows the article's content from the feed. So if that content is truncated, as is sometimes the case with RSS feeds, just scroll to the bottom and you'll see visit website. Just tap that and Palabra will open the site inside the app's browser for full content access. Now, Palabra, like News Plus, allows you to assign a preferred sharing destination so you don't waste time, especially in Lollipop, scanning through a huge list of apps that you'll never share news articles to. Palabra does include a most popular section that's taken from Feedly's API access, so you can see what news items are trending at the moment. That's kind of neat. And there's also Android Wear support baked in. You can find Palabra in the Play Store for free with an in-app $2.47 purchase to remove ads. All right, so it was really hard to pick apps for this week's episode to be inside and featured in the episode, if only because there are so many feed reader apps out there right now of, of great quality. Um, others look for Press, G Reader, which is actually created by the same developers as News Plus, a little bit different, a lot more you know different features. Uh, Paperboy is a new one I saw earlier today. Tap2, which is a social feed reader. The list goes on. But I had to pick three for this episode, so there you go. So if I had to pick one of these episodes or one of these apps from today's episode to live forever in my dreams and on my phone, which one would it be? Would it be Feed Me, News Plus, or Palabra? Or Palabra? Or, yeah, you know, I think that's how you say it in French anyways. Uh, well, Feed Me is a bit too stripped down for my own taste, though I do appreciate what it offers 
as a no cost solution. So it's definitely, it's good. But, uh, you know, if you're willing to, to pony up some dollars, I, I think the other two apps are maybe a little bit better. And Palabra really does look great. Uh, it has the material design kind of touches and I love the Android Wear support. But I suppose I appreciate the Swiss Army knife approach of News Plus just a little bit more. It's packed full of features that justify its premium price in my mind. So I pick News Plus as the winner this week. Now, like I said, I already have a ton of others that didn't make it into this episode. So they will go ahead and you know be filed away in my growing list of apps. And you can add to that list as well by emailing your suggestions to arena at twit.tv. I'm sure I'm going to do another feed reader episode in the future. It's a very popular category. All right, before we move on, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode. And let me just tell you about CNET's highest rated smart home system. It's called Smart Things. I'm sure you've heard me talk about it on this show, in fact, because it's awesome. Smart Things allows you to monitor and control and automate your home from anywhere using your smartphone. This is actually the Smart Things hub. This is kind of the brains of the operation here. Uh, so your lights, your locks, your thermostats, home security, it's all connected through a single app and you don't need a different app for every product. Uh, intuitive controls allow you to set the rules on your smart home through their free iOS, Android, and Windows phone apps. And with smart things, you can customize the way your smart devices talk to each other. So for instance, you can tap good night on your phone and your lights will turn off, your thermostat will adjust and the doors will lock. You can set your lamps to brighten each morning at sunrise or when you want to wake up. You can keep your home protected with smart things, uh, with home security, motion detection, water detection, and more. I actually have the, uh, the motion detector right here. In fact, these tiny little modules, it's a total modular approach and you can kind of use your imagination and, you know, build your smart home based on what you think it needs to be able to do. Thanks to these modules, enable your speakers to broadcast dogs barking if there's motion outside the house set a camera to take a series of photos when unwanted motion or entry is detected there are just there's so many ways to customize your smart things home smart things was named ces 2015 editor's choice award uh so that's saying something to get you started setting up your smart home right now smart things is offering android app arena listeners 10 percent off any home security and solution kit and Get free shipping in the U.S. when you go to smartthings.com slash twit. And you'll want to use the offer code twit at checkout. That's smartthings.com slash twit. We thank SmartThings for their continued support of Android App Arena. All right. Let's take a look at a game. It's a pretty simple premise, I'd say. But it's also very addictive, if not totally frustrating the longer you play it. It's this week's Big App. All right, let's lighten things up a bit with the big app this week. It's been a while since I've shown off a simple but addictive and moderately frustrating game on the show. A new game called Jelly Jump definitely qualifies, so let's play. You are a block of jelly, although sometimes you look more like a melty cube of butter, and that makes me salivate for some reason, but they didn't call this butter jump, so we'll just go with jelly. You begin on a platform at the bottom of the screen, and above you, other platforms suddenly begin to take shape. They close in rapidly. If you do absolutely nothing, a pool of black ooze beneath you rises to submerge and destroy all of your jelly-filled goodness. However, if you tap the screen at just the right time, you'll hop up and above the newly formed platforms, qualifying you to attempt the next round of platforms. Sometimes they close in from the sides, sometimes they rise from the bottom, sometimes they close in slowly and other times a bit too fast to judge. Time things incorrectly, you might get stuck in between a platform. You won't be able to move and that black ooze will take you once again to wherever it is that black ooze goes. There's something strangely, I don't know, delicious about this game, if that isn't a gross statement. I don't know, the, the gloopy sounds, the dripping butter, I, I mean jelly. Uh, jelly Jump certainly fits well into the same category as manic time passers like Flappy Birds and Timberman. And that fact right there will either sell you on its merits or turn you away never to look back again. Jelly Jump is free in the Play Store with a $1.99 in-app purchase to remove the ads. Now, by the way, on this week's episode of All About Android, Gina Trapani brought a game into the arena uh, by the same developers. It's Catch App, and it's a lot of fun, too. So if you like this, definitely check out 
Bounce. They're both uh, a lot of fun. Similar gameplay mechanics as Jelly Jump on that one. Uh, maybe even a bit more complicated and definitely a bit more varied as well. Uh, just a lot of fun. All right. So, uh, hey, you've heard me say this before. I love hearing from you guys. Your recommendations are very helpful. Please continue to send in your favorite apps, categories, all that stuff to arena at twit.tv. You can visit the subreddit and find my categories there. I post, you know, apps and categories there from time to time, hoping that you'll tell me what your favorite apps are. I just uh, put one in there today about live video and audio streaming apps for Android, and I need your help. So go to androidapparena.reddit.com and you can share those suggestions with me. You can follow me on Google Plus uh, for my Android musings uh, from time to time. Just search for me there. I also host a live viewing party of each week's episode where I'll be on set to answer any questions you might have about the apps in this show or really anything Android. That happens every Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Pacific following Tech News Tonight at live.twit.tv. And of course, if you missed the live taping, every week's episode will appear later that night on the site and in the feeds. And all those details can always be found at the show page. That's twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me once again today. My name is Jason Howell, and I will see you next week. I better see you next week in the arena.